finally it's working <laughs> hello guys i've been having some problems with the uh, connecting today i tried multiple times now i switched my phone and finally it works so i'm happy <laughs> we're gonna make it happen hello to everyone we are starting our live session our artist talk uh, my weekly series and today I have a special guest um, Christian Guemi, better known as 215 Paris-based French artist and the sculptor he makes stencil art of friends and people from all over the world and the key point of his graffiti works is to highlight human spirit happiness and sadness of people living in the neighborhood his works are very very voluminous and have lots of light effect. I love his work and I'm very excited to get connected to him today. Uh, I had uh, another artist, important artist, French artist uh, a few weeks ago, Richard Dolinsky. And uh, today we have Stencil Street artist and uh, he's well known as uh, France's answer to Banksy. So let's connect to Christian. Let's invite him to our artist talk and uh, we get to know about his street art and his life. So let me send a request. Okay, I sent request to Christian. I know he's online, he should receive it. And we should be together in a couple of moments. Let's see. Okay, I sent another request. Where am I? I'm in London at the moment. It's nice. Oh, yes, finally. <laughs> I can't believe we made this happen. Yeah, sometimes things are hard to get, but uh, that's the best so, so that we strive to get it. Hi. Yes, for some reason, my i this iPhone 11 didn't want to connect. So I had to find my iPhone 10 <laughs> and it worked better. <laughs> nice to meet you. Sometimes lets us down. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I can see you're in uh, your studio or... Yes. Uh, so I can show you around. Of, uh, cans what? in the background and... Yep. Lots of boxes. So tell us what what is going on there. So do you create something in your studio or it's all that's like the place that's the place where I paint where I paint for example this this kind of canvases. Mm hmm Yes, that's for uh, what I what, what I would call the market. And that's the place where I saw I stock all my stencils and uh, where I saw I, I destroy them. You destroy because, them? Why do you Yes, because them? you know I do that for 15 years and uh, if I would uh, keep everything I would, it would be like uh, warehouses and warehouses of stencils so sometimes I have to, to get rid of some of them but oh. I, I'm, I'm already full of stencils everywhere and uh, there is also spray cans, for example, always spray cans everywhere. And uh, material to paint on. I like to paint on objects like old, old newspaper uh, or postal boxes and uh, a lot of objects. That's, for example, bottles from First World War. 
where I used to paint uh, soldiers from the First World War to rem remember them. Uh, I have these uh, riot cop shields that you can see here. Mm -hmm. I am always collecting uh, objects to paint on. And, uh, yeah, because you... you use different surfaces for your artworks. It's even newspapers and maps and electric oh. boxes. Oh, this kind of helmets from the riot cops that I collect. Some are coming from the past, like in the 60s. But uh, yes, I, co I collect a lot of objects like enamel, enamel plates like mm -hmm. this. I collect a lot of objects to paint on and to interact with because uh, stencil art is a matter of interaction. Mm -hmm. And uh, out of my stencils, I also do sculpture. Yes, we can see this beautiful sculpture. What is it made of? It's, uh, it's a helmet boy and uh, it's made of iron, mm -hmm. different layers of iron all together so that you can see a lot of... Uh, there's lots of layers and uh, yes. we can see a play of lights. Uh, and you have to mystic. You you have to read it through to understand uh, the full model. You see? Yeah, yeah. And uh, yes, because no, oh, for example, this is C3PO mm -hmm. behind. It's a mess here. Yeah. You know, I do sculpture out of the same way I do stencils by cutting. So first, first you make a stencil. So how does the process work? You you cut your stencils by hand, I assume. Uh, I, I I I design them by hand, yes, because uh, I'm designing with a blade, and uh, I designing with a blade in paper, very small, and uh, afterwards I resize them. Mm -hmm. I resize uh, for the size I need to paint it. Mm -hmm. But first, I have to make it by hand with that tool, that kind of tool. That's the way I'm. The, so you cut with a razor. Yes, it's a, it's a. Maybe you can see it's it. A, it's not an easy job. I, sometimes I cut stencils myself, and if you make a minor mistake, you can ruin the whole stencil. So you have but, to. Be very precise and you can see my finger yeah yep <laughs> my finger is, fingers. is made yeah. because of my blade my finger has been changing shape so you, you know you must be cutting stencils every day every day for 15 years Incredible. every day every day yes for sure uh yes for example i can show you some because now I keep them very clean, my originals. Mm -hmm. And uh, which, I brand use... do you, which brand do you use for spray paints? I use every kind of spray, of, of spray paints that are on the market because every brand mm -hmm. has properties. And for example, what people would, would think it's a... Uh... Uh, maybe you, you want to see my face a bit, but it's not so interesting, but okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And for example, you have brands that people think is low quality, but mm -hmm. low quality is a property. And uh, it means that it's not covering so much. Mm -hmm. So you get transparency. Yep. So if you use it to get the transparency, it's mm -hmm. not low quality, it's transparent. Yeah, and some brands, they, they have special transparent uh, light and uh, full coverage, and there's different kind of caps you, you can use to... To just to show you the size, what I can, what I could by hand, that's the size. So first you cut by hand the small one. Can you show us how, like, what would be the size? So that would be the size. If you want to have the same, for example, one meter by one and a half meter. So how does that work? Do you, do you so use I have cutting afterwards, or I have assistance. Mm -hmm. And regarding the process, uh, it depends on the purpose. Because if I want to make it very big, for example, I don't need to resize the stencil. I will print, and I will square the print, and I will paint freehand. So my design very big to replicate it very big. 
If I want to make it medium size, according to the quality of the design, I can get it laser cut it resized, mm -hmm. or I can ask an assistant to uh, make it bigger, but to make bridges to keep the structure very strong. It depends. Stencil art is, is good when it's not, it's very b bizarre to say it, but mm -hmm. it's good. It's, a, it's good not to be too mechanical and mm -hmm. to think every time on purpose what would be the pro what would be the process what is the uh, what is the process to get the best results according to the project yeah, so so how does the idea um get birth, give birth in the, your brain how does it happen what has been uh, very weird in this uh, job is that when i began few, almost 15 years ago it did not exist uh, stencil art as a job, you know. Mm -hmm. So I have to invent everything by myself as every stencil artist. It's a, every stencil artist had to invent by himself his own process. So when, when did you start uh, making street art and stencils? It depends what you call street art because in the late 80s, I was 15, uh, my generation was really influenced by hip hop music. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went in the streets a few times, and, but while my few friends who were doing it at this moment were interested in the American style, making tags, uh, lettering, I was already interested in making uh, drawings, interacting with the city. Mm -hmm. I had a Vespa, you know, the motorcycle Vespa, and I wanted, and my Vespa was yellow and everybody was mocking at my yellow Vespa in the city because it was so yellow that <laughs> teenagers <laughs> were really, <laughs> really nasty and mocking me. So it was a provocation for me to paint my yellow Vespa everywhere. So that without signing, mm -hmm. everybody could, knew, could know that it was me painting but without any proof that mm -hmm. it was me. But it was really like a ambivalent. Is it him painting that yellow Vespa or someone mocking at him? But at the same time was a way uh, to have a rumor and to interact with the city and interact with the streetscape. So, so at this time already was, was just for the fun because I was not thinking uh, about mm -hmm. art and but was already street art. So how did this transition happen when you start making art professionally and uh, making money? Uh, it would be uh, weird to say, but I'd never been intending to become an artist. Never. Mm -hmm. This has been falling on me because uh, I had a, a daughter in 2003. First, I, when I did that, I, I'm coming from a very popular background. So for my family, like being an artist is like, like what? Mm -hmm. It's not a job. It's not a real yeah. job. Mm -hmm. First, you get a real job and then you can and have fun. Then you can have hobby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So to make my, my family uh, satisfied, I've been studying a lot in university. I've been studying German, English until bachelor. And I've been mm -hmm. studying history until a master. And twice a master in art history and architectural history. So they were satisfied. I was a good student with a lot of diplomas. And then I went for regular jobs because my family is the same. Being very popular for them, you know, it cannot be bohème, you know, bourgeois bohème. No, I had to get a job, a proper yeah. job. Real job. A real, real job. <laughs> and then I, uh, I got a baby. And uh, with the mother, we've been separating too quick. And I've been very afraid that my daughter uh, would believe I abandoned her. Mm. And for me, it has been very a very disaster uh, to split, not with the mother, because that was a decision, but to split also from the baby. Because for a father, uh, mm. when you split from, a, from the wife uh, you had and the girl you loved, you have to accept and integrate. You won't see your, your kids anymore so yeah. much. Mm -hmm. And for me, because I'm very, uh, very much into my, 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 my daughter, and uh, that's her birthday tomorrow. 
and uh, oh, she's she, she's she's seventeen tomorrow. And she's uh, the girl. <laughs> yes. So, I've been quitting my real jobs mm -hmm. because I was too depressed. It was really I was really depressed of not watch not seeing her anymore enough. And I decided to make portraits of her with stencils to paint her face around her place. So that when she would go out with the grandparents and with the mother in parks and streets everywhere, she would see her oh, portraits so that she would know that I'm not her around. Her father is thinking about her. Yes, I'm not a stalker, but I am here with her and Jeez. I love her and I spend time yes. cutting stencil of her. And step by step, after one or two years, she has been understanding that I've been investing myself a lot in doing her portraits. She has been my first main subject. Wow. And then she has been understanding how much I was investing myself with her mm -hmm. while she was absent. And that's the beginning of this. And uh, a guy called Tristan Manco, who was a, a partner of Banksy, who has been uh, selecting me to be part of the Cannes Festival in 2008 with Banksy. Yeah. And you've been featured in uh, one documentary about Yes, that. yes, I've been, fe I've been featured as well in his, in his film. And this has been really like launching me worldwide uh, to focus on my works because this style with a lot of line and so on was quite new. And then I never been back uh, to regular jobs, the real jobs. And my grandmother, because I've been raised by my grandmother, mm -hmm. one of the when she when she understood that I would become uh, an artist, she said, "What? You've been studying so long to do tags?" <laughs> no, you're not <laughs> and afterwards, before she died, she said to me, hmm, "That's okay. Never stop what would you, what you are doing." Ah, oh, that's nice. <laughs> so she One of the very blessing. last things she said to me before dying was, no, never stop what you do. Yeah, do what you love. That's very important to follow your passion. I think only in this way you can succeed. No I know that uh, it's very ambivalent because now I have a very professional life. And at the same time, I have the feeling not to work. I'm not working. I'm I'm uh, I'm working when I have to face uh, a commission, mm -hmm. a deadline, or a, a big of public. When there is a lot of public, uh, it's a pressure because people expect from you a lot of feedback, and in a few seconds or a few minutes, uh, they expect from you to have a strong relation, and you cannot because you know. First, I'm shy. And uh, and so when I am in front of people, I am a bit stressed and they, they can believe like, oh, what, this guy is not so cool, but it's just about <laughs> being under stress. For me, for example, it's very easy to speak with you now because we are two people. Yeah. But if I watch that we are thousand, it's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but two people is easy for me and uh, a crowd is more difficult. And street art, is related to this because in 2005 and six when I began, for me would not be. I've always been designing since I'm a kid, designing a lot, but I would never be happy uh, to go uh, to someone like a gallerist or a journalist or a critic to say, "Hey, what do you this think my of my work?" work? Yeah. This was not possible because uh, I was too shy and. Uh, I don't have enough ego for mm -hmm. this. I have a very small ego. For it's really, uh, I am confident because I used to work a lot, and I believe in work, in working. But by myself, you know, I think you have so much art and so many artists, and uh, not easy to break through and to become successful and to become a prominent living artist. Especially. I feel very lucky to have been successful in my level, but I was not the first to do that. I was not the first artist. I will not be the last. There will be many people coming afterwards and that's nice. I'm not the worst. I think I can find worse artists than mine, but it's not my job to, to, to point them out.
<laughs> and I'm not the best. So there are many very great artists right now all over the time. And this relativity has been really a, a long way of metaphysical, uh, metaphysical relativity mm -hmm. that has been helping me to, helping me to, to live, to have one life, you know. And now what I just ask is to have one life. It's not to being the best or being the biggest or being the richest or being the most talented or, or being, getting the, the biggest audience or, you know, all this mm -hmm. means nothing. It's just to have my life, my own life. Not, some, not a life that could be uh, determined by uh, society or others' uh, criterion, you know. It's, just a life that is really fitting to my mind and what I am able and, uh, and that's, that's, that's important for me. I'm not, uh, I know what I can do, what I can't, what, what I'm good at doing, what I'm not good at doing. And uh, for example, when I see someone like Gier spending an evening like with Madonna, mm -hmm. I said, wow, I'm very impressed. Not that he is with Madonna, but because I, I was, I could not do that. Uh, she would be bored with me, you know. <laughs> Maybe you think so. You never know. <laughs> after poor Madonna, after one evening with me, she would like she would be so depressed, you know. Like <laughs> so, so it's important to in life as an artist to be determined by yourself and to to do what you want to do and to express what you are. Really, and there are, what is sure is that there are not so many artists especially in street art that are, that are really uh, building that. And uh, that's what I would say to the young people. Don't think that there is a receipt, you know, like, a, like in cooking, mm -hmm. to be a street artist. You don't have to use this color and to do these subjects and to do that tool. There is no rules. There is no rules. Just, I've been doing stencils because when I began, it was forbidden to paint in the streets. There was no space to do it. As mm -hmm. soon as you were so it painting, was illegal. it was illegal. As soon as you were painting in 2005, something in the streets of Paris, the day, the day after it was at, at, you know, arrested, at, unfortunately, no. But the day after was, was buffed mm -hmm. by city council. Yeah. So now if you want to do something on the streets, do you get a special permission from the government? No, process? but you know, you for example, last year I got a, a medal mm -hmm. from culture minister uh, from a chivalry of arts and letters. I've been doing, I got, uh, now you can call me sir. <laughs> sir. <laughs> yes, uh, there, there have been uh, three graffiti artists mm -hmm. getting that recognition from culture ministers that is very nice. And uh, another example is that I've been painting in, uh, in many, uh, well, not many, but a few uh, national museums, like Pantheon. Like, That's uh, a big achievement. Yeah. Yes, so it's a big achievement. And I've been also doing a tribute, a public tribute for, for big cultural figures in France, like Simone Veil, or, mm -hmm. and now the cops, they know me. Mm -hmm. So when, they, when I get uh, control, they say it's C215. So <laughs> what, what does C215 mean? So for, for those who it, doesn't know. So it means it nothing. Mean. Mm -hmm. Precisely Why nothing. Why combination of numbers or... Yes, because when I began to do that, what I wanted to express is that the invasion in our lives, everyone of letters and, and, and numbers, mm -hmm. of codes, you need a code to access your Instagram account. You have a code uh, for, uh, for medicine, medicine numbers. You have a code mm -hmm. to everywhere. Your ID has a code. code. And, and now we, we can get almost replaced. Uh, what, what has been your name? Your name and for, first name means something. It has a meaning. It's not only a way to 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 say that's her. No, it's the name of your father, 
we know from your name that you come from this region, that maybe one of your ancestors has been doing this job, mm -hmm. and that your parents were from that kind of culture that they have been determining you with a name. And now, step by step, we get replaced by letters and numbers that have precisely no meaning, just making you singular, but singular with no meaning. And this is C215. It was about speaking about, um, I have to say it in English, uh, depersonalization. Mm -hmm. So no personality. Yes. That's uh, when you get, it's like you, you are. So you're just a number. You're one of. You, uh, yes, you are a number in a crowd. That uh, yeah. it, make, it makes it makes life like so so sad that you get like, like a, a clandestinity somewhere that you are just a number. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows you. you know? I think also that's why you use in your street art. You use the people, random people, anonymous people. You use uh, people you just meet on the street or even homeless. Yes, I've been I've been working a lot about. Homeless is, uh, is um, the biggest case because these people, you watch them in the streets and I, I always ask myself, but they have parents, they have a name, mm -hmm. they, have, they have been babies, they have been babies, they have been cherished by a mother, I hope for them. And they, no one cares. Yeah. They, have, they have sister maybe, they have brothers, who is looking, who is looking for them, got them uh, forgotten, mm -hmm. did they escape? And uh, I always, they question me a lot, but uh, yes, that's, that's something important. And even with famous people, what I like is not to work with the pop culture because everybody mm -hmm. knows the face of Beyonce. Every day she has a new face mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's important for, for example, some, some time, if you speak about Chekhov, mm -hmm. I guess a lot of kids they heard about Chekhov, they've been studying Chekhov, they never saw his face. Yeah, but he was a human being like them, and, that, and yeah. that, that's an inspiration as well, to be facing the humanity of people that have been influencing a lot like that. Yeah, like for example, when you went to Moscow, you, you drew the portraits of Yuri Gagarin and Valentina Tereshkova, it's the first uh, uh, cosmonauts. Russian cosmonauts that went to space and uh, I'm sure like some people don't even know how they look like or they have an idea and it's beautiful that uh, you made those portraits. I, it's, uh, uh, these two portraits have be, uh, made them to exhibit the picture of them in the uh, Air and Space Museum in France because I have right now until mid-September an exhibition in the Air and Space Museum Mm -hmm. uh, the name, the, the French name is La Conquête des Cieux, means the conquest of the sky. And uh, it's about uh, 35 portraits mm -hmm. uh, explaining the conquest of, of, uh, of planes and then space conquest uh, from Leonardo da Vinci uh, to Thomas Pesquet, who is a French uh, spaceman. Amazing. So that, that's going to be your next show. Yes. I Not that I'm, you know, when, when I began in the beginning, maybe the first years was about to explain to the public that painting in the streets can be something else than vandalism. Yeah. So because uh, after 20 years with a lot of a priori, with a lot of... Uh, People were, were, were convinced that as soon as you do, it's, it's because you are a vandal. Mm -hmm. My generation, especially in the mid of 2000s, 2005 to 2010, we've been painting a lot, I think, without saying it, just to show the people, watch. Mm -hmm. Watch out. It could be different. We can paint in the street stuff that you, you will like, not as a rebellion, but as a revolution. Because we have, we have been trying to change the sight of people on street art. And afterwards, when I got the recognition, step by step, what I said, I said, oh, I want to be useful, you know, 
I want to be useful for society because uh, now I'm 46, you know, I'm, I'm an old guy. Uh, for me, it has, would be absolutely, absolutely not meaningful mm -hmm. to play like the rebel. It would be like theater and I'm not playing. So I try to share with, with the kids a maximum of my references because I said you what I've been studying is not art, it's history. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and culture. So I want to share what can be gathering people around culture, about faces, about inspirational people from the past, or references we can have and we can share together to continue to build a society while the society is splitting more and more into communities. It's not so about- what is, what is your main mission? What, what are you trying to show throughout your art? I think I want to make people happy. Like a DJ want to make people dance. Mm -hmm. I want to make people happy. It's really, we are in a, in a society, especially in the internet era, where disqualification, where uh, it's very, it's very, uh, it's very easy to target someone and to turn him down. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to have words that are splitting people Mm -hmm. that a world who make people against each other. Yeah. It's really harder, really harder to have a medium way and try to say, hey, if we could, maybe we can share something all together. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can agree on something yeah. on a basis, even it's a small basis, even it's a very classic, even if it's just a face of Chekhov, <laughs> I don't know. But something that we can all like together, being equal, in front of this and so like, uh, how you're trying to unite people and find the subject that everybody would be interested in and uh, yes appreciate. honestly i know that uh, people have uh, an idea of street art where it's absolutely rebellion or like turning things upside down but for me turning things upside down can be also change a society where everybody is clashing each other into a model where people can carry, when you can, uh, well, can um, gather, gather, and then enjoy a bit of life because it's it just clash everywhere, clash and polemics. And I'm very tired of that. Yeah, and I'm, every year I get more and more tired about polemics and clash does not mean that I, I agree everything I see in society, that, I can, that I'm not believing we have to change things about ecology, that we have a, there is a very big work for the, for the new generation about equality, about equality between genders, about equality with communities and minorities. All yeah, this it's amazing very... that artists are trying to draw attention to this existing uh, problems and uh... Exactly. See, yeah, look look but, what's happening in the world, and uh, we should change that. It's in our hands to 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 make a move and and uh, to to make this world a better place. But we can we can try to do it without clashing each other continually. Because when you see uh, events, the biggest uh, politicians in the world from the biggest states using Twitter like a tool to clash mm -hmm. every day and doing buzz yes. and, and, and shit storms and stuff like that. It's, that's not a political world we are mm -hmm. entering in. I want to, to make the world a li just a bit more political. I, I don't heard you also, you write poems. <laughs> yes. Is that true? I began with that and uh, Event Seat 1-5 uh, was the beginning of it because I was uh, writing poems for my daughter when she when she was two girl. and i got them uh, illustrated uh, from many street artists and that's the way i began to mix up with street artists and begin to paint in the street as well mm -hmm. so like you we were talking about these things and uh have you ever be, been involved into some charity work uh yes for example with the covid uh, with the covid fund. I do it as, as, as much as I can and when I feel, because uh, what is important is not to do 
just to appear in charity, but to mm -hmm. make your own charity. That is important to make it for what you feel. And to not, that is, it does not have to be an obligation. What is important is really to make it with art. And when I saw, for example, the COVID, uh, mm -hmm. I've been raising money for hospitals. I've been the first artist in France to launch an operation to raise mm -hmm. money for hospitals. It was exactly. not so much. I raised 35,000 euros. It's very good. It's a, it's a big money. Yeah, well, I don't know. For me, but I think uh, it's always, no, we it's can always good. make more. But uh, it's important when you can feel that you can act and do something by yourself to mm -hmm. participate in a better world, even if it's a big, a big world to describe it. But if you can act and do something, Mm -hmm. Let's go. I do, but yeah, not I mean, everything. You've, you've created some artwork. Uh, I think it's yes. called Bob during uh, coronavirus. Yes, from two two persons. At the, when I began, because it's long to create a stencil like this, uh, has been like five years, five five days of uh, cutting. Mm -hmm. The virus was coming from China at this moment and going to Italy. And when I began and when I got the idea, four of them was mainly Chinese people who were suffering from the virus. So it's two Asian people kissing each other, but deprived of really kissing each other because of masks. And I tried to make a, a picture that is a bit poetical and mm -hmm. uh, dreamy. Mm -hmm. And in the same time, that is questioning herself with the new relationship with that social di distance yeah that, and that i created it in march i credited in march imagine Amazing. was mid-march and uh and now that we are in august we are living completely in social distance it's crazy yeah. so what did happen for you as a street artist during the coronavirus during the lockdown so did you spend most of your time in the studio or did, it, did uh, you have i'm lucky to share my life artist. in between the uh, countryside and Parisian uh, side. And at the moment of the lockdown, we were with uh, my kid. I have a 15 month kid, mm -hmm. Gabin. <laughs> and uh, I, we were in the countryside. So we stayed in the countryside and I've been working a lot uh, on things that I'm not used to, to work on. And uh, I've been in a, in a certain way Stopping the schedule of uh, my commissions and things to to enjoy mm -hmm. uh, things that that are very important for me, and I've been working a lot on portraits of resistance mm -hmm. of people. It's okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on resistance, uh, people who have been uh, being able to risk their lives. Mm -hmm. Uh, for the ideas and to fight uh, the Nazis during the mm -hmm. Second World War. So you've been and focusing on their portraits. Yes, because that's people, you know, people never buy you a canvas with these faces. So, yes. so... We don't really know how did they look like. But nobody, we know their names because of a lot of streets and monuments have their names, but people do yeah. not know their faces. And uh, so it was a free time for me, like uh, was a hobby time. <laughs> so, yeah, and the technique you use, it's, it, you, you play with colors, with light, so there is so much volume and so much depth in the portraits, so they really come alive once you look at them. I try to, I try to make, uh, you know, stencil art can be very graphical. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will show you stuff. Yeah, some sensilari just like black and white or... Yes, and it can be very static. Yeah. And it can be very your, static. And yours is so colorful and with so many details, with so much depth. It can be very static. And if I show you, for example, from a book, uh, I've been trying this. This is a book from 2009. I, I've been uh, precisely choosing an old book. And at mm -hmm. this time... What I was painting, it's too much light. What I was painting was really black and white because it was my beginning. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it was even like one layer or one layer that was in the USA. Mm -hmm. And step by step, 
have been making them more complex and coming to that kind of of coloration. Mm -hmm. And this is multi-layer. And I try to make it more and more alive with a lot so of powerful. motion and movement, trying to to escape the graphical side, not graphic anymore, but more what I call uh, plastic. I have to move a little bit around because this phone, it shows that my battery is dying, so I have to connect it. <laughs> Uh, this I was I was young. This was in India in 2008. So I try I tried to evolve and to make it evolve. Uh, all always like uh, not not to stay on a definite style, but always trying to to get uh, new results and uh, and always new projects. For example, here. Yeah, very beautiful technique. Here, I've been painting a complete church mm -hmm. about Albert Durer works and changing the sailing and so on. Every time I try to make something new. Matching with the uh, stained glass. And I'm you love interested. colors. You, you, you use different... I try, right. what, I, what I try is to, to get uh, something that is fitting with the uh, context. Yes, something can be... For, for me, there is not a, a special colorway or design. Always I, I check uh, the surroundings mm -hmm. and I try to, to decide what is the best uh, what is the best work to do in this surrounding? For example, here you can see. So this is a mural on one of the buildings. Yes, that's a seven seven it's, floor seven floor cat. But what's important? What is, is it important? In yes, you see the cat like that. Beautiful. But but he's watching the subway line. You know, when you see is what is important important is the interaction with the context. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the surrounding. So how does it happen? How do you choose the subject? Like once, for example, you get a permission from the government to pay, to paint to to use a particular wall, then how does the idea come? Uh, you know, why cat? Why from, not from, other for animals? me? For me, it's like like you when you choose your clothes in the morning. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really what you could, what you should call. A very, simple, a very simple inspiration. What is interesting me today? What I want to express today? Is there something that in my life or in public, uh, public, uh, public life this this time that I'm very focused uh, or very interested in? It's not. Uh, I'm very. It's not chaotic, but it's very free. You know. Uh, it's not. I don't have a schedule. I know that there are many street artists who are, for example, there are a few, ah, I'm doing these tags always, or I'm using just that colorway because that's my signature. Mm -hmm. For me, I don't care. This, or, but I think your technique is very recognizable. And <laughs> I try to, to enjoy life, you know, it's just to have a life. And see if something happens tomorrow that I was not uh, thinking about, but that I want to interact with because it has been moving me, I will do. And uh, and I also interact more and more with the people or organization uh, who are asking me to support them mm -hmm. with that kind of work. Or, for example, uh, on Monday, mm -hmm. last Monday, we had uh, Gisèle Halimi. Uh, Gisèle Halimi, who, who has been dying at the age of 93. Mm -hmm. She was a lawyer and uh, she has been fighting her whole life for feminist uh, causes. And she has been also supporting emancipation in Algeria. And uh, she, she was really a strong woman for uh, gender equality yeah. and a model for all the new generations of feminists. And uh, 
uh, a union of uh, uh, students in law, mm -hmm. uh, Jewish students in law, came to me and said, oh, please, can you, uh, can you do uh, a portrait? And I said, you're right. I will do it with you. Yeah. I will do it and we will go together to paint it together. And I will catch attention on what you want to say. So it's very powerful. It's very simple. But, you know, what, but, is dif what is difficult? I think what is difficult is to make it very simple. Uh, the, with years, years and years, what, I, what, what life is teaching me is to do it more and more simple. <laughs> like what I do today, okay, that's, that's the line today, you know, what I have to do. And not thinking, oh, if I do that, they will say that, they will, they will so sing you, that. You don't really plan, you just go with the, what you feel like. And after years after years, it's sad, but I'm watching less and less the social networks. Mm -hmm. And watching less and less what uh, what people say and the way they they comment about my works mm -hmm. because it's. But really... I'm pretty much sure you're getting mostly positive comments. Like, oh, you get like... you get always uh, both, you know. But I don't want to interact with that. Is I don't want to interact anymore with negativity. Yeah, you have to filter. Yeah, if yes. you really react and. Uh, Get life is too short life right. is very short and uh, you have a, now internet is giving uh, the power to anyone to be really like spoiling your day you know <laughs> but uh, it, it can spoil your day only if you matter about and if you focus on that but uh, you read one bad comment and then if you really start and then, then, you, and then you, you turn the press yeah, it's it's not even that you turn depressed about yourself, but you say, oh, the world is full of people, really naughty and bitter people. Yeah. I don't want to watch that. I prefer to try to do something by myself that is positive and that is making a maximum of people happy. But yeah, it's still nice that you're sharing your art on social media so people can enjoy and appreciate it. Those those who can travel and enjoy it on the streets. But you know, sure. we live in times where people are, it's a pure, lot of puritanism and people are, maybe they are lost and they look for perfect people. They look for perfect idols, mm -hmm. but nobody's perfect. No one's perfect. Yeah. No one's perfect. perfect. If you watch very close to anyone's life, anyone's speech over his life, you will find something that can make everyone upset about everybody. Mm -hmm. And what is important to me is to improve myself every day, not to judge others, not to watch what is wrong, but to try to, to track and to catch what's what can inspire me to become a better person and, be, and become a bit inspirational for a few people who can be inspirational for others. And that's the only way I think we can try to fight against neg negativity because if not, if you really open your eyes about this world, there are so many reasons to despair. Mm -hmm. there, are so, there are only reasons to despair, but we have the duty of being optimistic. It's, it's not about about being rational, it's about a duty. A duty is not rational. A duty is that we have, I have for my daughter, I have for my son, to find reasons to make them optimistic and fightful in mm -hmm. life and think about the other kids. And there are a lot of people who are not thinking like that. They want just to turn you down. But mm -hmm. I don't want this life, so I prefer, I so think that more and more I will everybody be... Everybody to be successful, to be happy, to have a good life. And no, but I, I can't I can face uh, difficulties and understand economical problems, uh, sanitary problems. For example, I paint almost every month in prisons. I go almost every month in French prisons to paint for free portraits. Incredible. Not only for the prisoners, because this would be unfair. Mm -hmm. I paint for everybody being in that prison, in that building. Uh, so it's about the guardians, 
it's about the nurses, it's about yeah. the lawyers, families mm -hmm. who come to visit the prisoners, the prisoners by themselves. And what I try to do, and I do it for free because for me it's very important so that I get credibility, mm -hmm. is to make them equal. I give you what I can do the best is a big painting. It's just, yeah, it's interesting how you show the the life, not only beautiful side of life, but how people live, for example, in prison, what, what kind of challenges uh, they are facing on a daily basis. They have to live have together. No they have to live together in jail. The prisoners and the guardians and the nurses and the lawyers and the families who visit them anyway they are on the same boat mm -hmm. in this building. So I come and I try to make something inspirational for them. It can be uh, a soccer player. It can be something easy, you know, to understand, but mm -hmm. inspirational. Mm -hmm. so, and, but with my skills, the maximum of my skills, and I have a speech with them to say, you see, when you are watching this, you are not a guardian, or you are not a prisoner anymore. Mm -hmm. You are equal because mm -hmm. the way you watch it, is the same. So I try and, 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 and this, I leave it for you for free. And now you have to take care about because mm -hmm. that's, it, so you leave your, to you. whatever you paint there, you leave it there. Yes. Because... I used to that that's when true. you paint in the streets, you leave a lot of works behind you. And so one day they'll become very rich once they sell <laughs> those no. paintings for I'm not sure of that. <laughs> I'm not sure. But what it shows is that what I paint in prisons, I think, will stay a long time. Yes, yeah. because... You know, I was very impressed also when you went to Albania to visit the landfill. Wow, yes. You this... showed the kids that... Uh... This was really hard. This was really hard because you... Yeah. First, you think about the nature, that you see landscape, landscape of trash, you know. And complete, you can see, you cannot see the, the end of the yeah, trash. That's a big problem for all countries. And now Europe is selling trash, trash to yes. third world countries. And exactly. And instead of see thinking that, of recycling. That is, it's an opportunity for kids and poor people in these places. So you see the paradox of, of life, you know, that you say, well, we are, some, we are living, experiencing a, a situation that is very difficult to solve about consumption and trash and ecology and social equality. Yeah. Thank you that you bring attention to this major problems throughout your art. I do, I do what I can. Important. <laughs> well, it was so nice talking to you and very interesting. Thank you for sharing all these experiences and your art and showing around your studio. Thank you. And sorry for Friday, but we have been very uh, freaked yeah, out because of the happen. sun with my, with my kids. So I could not be, I could not be on Friday, but I'm happy I that people came fun. today and that you came back today. And I'm happy that we made it. And thank you for, for this time together. I hope to meet you in person in yes, Paris. Yes, next time in Paris, I will definitely Come in my studio, you you're welcome. <laughs> Definitely, I come quite often. <laughs> and thanks for the people supporting. Ciao. Thank you for watching. Ciao. Bye.